Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Tim Hatt, the head of research at GSMA Intelligence, uh, and I'm really pleased to be here today to talk about and moderate <clears throat> this session on digital transformation uh, in the post-COVID era. Um, I'm going to start by giving some opening remarks uh, to set the scene and paint the context, uh, and then I'll be joined by three fantastic speakers from organizations operating at the coal face of this topic and its many tributaries. So I think we're in for an interesting discussion. Uh, just by way of context, GSMA Intelligence is a global um, uh, research and analyst group. Uh, we sit within the GSMA organization. Um, our primary coverage sector is, is the telecoms industry, uh, but we do cover broader TMT and increasingly enterprise verticals uh, as this process of digitization takes hold and so many technologies uh, converge together through that, through that process. Um, you can see the product description here. Um, I'm happy to uh, go into more detail uh, if you want to uh, make that request uh, offline. So COVID has of course been and remains a shock to the world at large. Um, from the start of 2020 through to the present time, cases and tragically uh, fatalities have continued to rise uh, through multiple phases and albeit with different dynamics depending on the country. But of course, the public health crisis remains primary and front and center for governments and, and nations at large. But of course, there has also been a severe economic impact, both in terms of how industries uh, operate and are able to trade through the pandemic, as well as through the longer term and changes in behaviors about how people go about their business and how businesses operate. And that's really what we want to get into today. Uh, looking first at the telecom sector, there has, of course, been a financial impact. Uh, as a consumer and business-facing industry, uh, that would be expected. Um, we estimate it at between 4 and 8% uh, of revenues in 2020, um, with some variation, again, depending on the region. That is, though, a more resilient performance in the wider economy. Um, the drop has been about half that of GDP. And that really comes down to the resiliency of the networks and of the services so many people and businesses rely on, and indeed governments uh, to help manage uh, the recovery through this period. The big picture continues to favor scaled digital platforms. Uh, what we're looking at here are valuation uh, evolutions or changes uh, over the course of, of the last 12 months. Um, and you can see that for uh, well-known technology companies, uh, Apple, Google, Netflix, and of course, Zoom, um, you can see that profile steadily rising, uh, telecoms relatively uh, resilient, and then a host of sectors that have, have been quite severely impacted. It isn't though just about scale of one company, but rather of an ecosystem. And that's how we want to get into the discussion on uh, collaboration towards uh, moving towards solutions that can balance scale and customization. The interesting thing is that at the same time as we are going through this period of unprecedented upheaval, new technologies are coming online and towards fruition. 5G is one. Uh, we forecast around 20% of the global uh, mobile subscriber base, uh, equivalent to 1.6 billion people, will be active 5G users by 2025. And that has a whole range of interesting use cases on the consumer side, but equally important are those on the enterprise front. And, and there are a range of sectors from manufacturing through to healthcare, transportation, um, oil and gas, and, and a host of others that are using this technology and its related applications is as part of their digital transformation processes. But we know that COVID has changed not only the financial outlook, but the operational outlook. Um, what we're showing here on the left are sentiments from um, CIOs or other technology buyers in enterprises. And you can see that as a result of the pandemic, investment decisions have been pushed out a little bit, two, three, four, sometimes five years from now than they otherwise would have been uh, for deploying IoT projects. But within that, there is also the challenge of continuing to work with organizations on that journey. 
And so whether that is making sure that technology can integrate with legacy systems, um, be uh, assured of, of security and, and, and privacy, or cost efficiencies, the point here is that technology alone isn't a panacea. It's not the problem solver on itself. It has to be accompanied by a consultative mindset of helping organizations through that digital transformation journey. And again, that's what our, our speakers are going to be discussing today. So um, with that, that concludes the opening section. Uh, and I'll now introduce our speakers. Uh, first, we have Vishal Upadhyay, who is the Chief Information Officer for Mensal, uh, telecom provider in Nepal. Uh, secondly, Alex Lee, uh, the Senior Director of Ding Talk, part of the Alibaba Group. And finally, Stephen Cho, the Chief Digital Officer of Whale Cloud. So with that, Vishal, I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Steve. Thank you for introducing. Uh, it, it's a great topic. And it's something that we're all learning post-COVID era. Uh, before I get into uh, COVID, I mean, it's, uh, let me give you a brief background across Ancel and who we are. Um, Ancel, uh, we are a digital telco and part of Asiata Group from Malaysia. And we've been operating in Nepal for, we were the first private sector mobile operator in Nepal. As of today, we cover about 17.7 .7 million population base, around 92%. Uh, sorry, we cover 17, we have 17.7 .7 million subscriber base, and we cover about 92% of the population in Nepal, whereby we have approximately 60% ruler coverage across Nepal. Um, before getting to post COVID era, maybe I'll touch upon bit on the pre-COVID and how we flared up during the COVID period itself. You know, talking about pandemic, it is not just about businesses. It's, it's more across uh, people and uh, society in general and how we as an organization could leverage our infrastructure to assist people uh, to deal with the pandemic I think we're the first one in the country to think across and uh, putting thoughts together on how do we go about supporting the citizens of this nation. And luckily for us, the government established a COVID-19 control prevention and treatment fund. And on the very first day of the lockdown itself, we contributed somewhere around 100 million Nepalese rupees in this fund to the government to, in the, for the prevention of COVID. Similarly, there were whole heaps of uh, activities that we did to leverage our infrastructure. Let me emphasize, it was very important that we leverage our infrastructure. We, we used our infrastructure to connect uh, doctors with people, as well as the infrastructure that we had across, whether it is our network, or SMS, USSD, OBD, or call tones, whatever it is, we used them for <clears throat> uh, connecting doctors as well as awareness free of cost and to the people of this nation. And it got a very good applaud from the general public as well. We also used our digital channels, whether it is our website, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our own application ecosystem to successfully raise awareness of COVID to the people. And we also invited a few celebrities, you know, as you know, I mean, celebrities, their voices are heard uh, very well. And we used, we leveraged the brand power of the celebrities and fused them with our platform to raise awareness across the country. You know, there were frontliners who were <clears throat> working day in and out. We had to ensure that communication is not interrupted for the frontliners. We almost gave away 200,000 SIM cards and connectivity across so that the frontliners were always there supporting people. Similarly, for our consumer base, uh, you know, there were whole heaps of programs that were run across, like giving 
yeah, 120% bonus uh, for whatever they have spent so that they get more than double the value of whatever they were spending with us. The huge discount that we give on uh, the data, especially data so that, I mean, people don't, people are connected all the times. Uh, there were free balance transfer and we also provided emergency loan or free airtime or for the people so that they really did not have to worry about communication during this period. You know, talking about business, yes, uh, COVID did have a toll for Ansel in this particular market. Uh, during the early days of lockdown, uh, our business went down by about 30%. We took a 30% hit on our business, but we knew that we have to bounce back. And the only way for us to bounce back is via innovation. And innovation is uh, something that was uh, sort of fast forwarded uh, by the COVID, you know, there's always a lot of discussions, even jokes happening around who do you think led the innovation and digital transformation process across the world, whether it is your CEO, your CIO, and the answer comes COVID, right? I think COVID really forced us to think in this direction. And we knew we have to do something uh, away from whatever we were doing in the past. And so we started working with SMEs and small businesses. What can we do to help these organizations? So we immediately realized that the struggle was quite a lot when it came uh, to uh, businesses on seamless connectivity or giving them the IT infrastructures. So we are the only tier three data center provider in Nepal. And we've recently launched the data center. So uh, we are simply providing our data center infrastructure, our cloud infrastructure to the SMEs and small businesses in Nepal as the uh, world moved to online, uh, you know, uh, there's a real connectivity issue in Nepal, especially rural Nepal. If you understand the geography of the nation, it's a very mountainous and hilly terrain and connectivity is at sparse at time. So we tied up with school colleges, whether it is private or government and ensure that <clears throat> for the online learning we facilitated via our connectivity packages and our cloud resources. Similarly, in order to envision the digital Nepal for Nepal, we establishing a modern digital lab in 60 schools across the nation. Maybe ours is a bit different compared to other parts of the world because we have to understand that digital adoption was very less during the pre-COVID period. And there was a real need for the nation to take that leapfrog. And uh, COVID unfortunately became that catalyst for the nation to jump to digital. But when, when we talk about going into digital, we have to look at things from end to end. On one hand side, we have to move from uh, paper-based selling to e-sales. So we had to revamp our whole uh, ecosystem end to end. Now, when we, when we do an ecosystem revamp end to end, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the people who speak different languages, people who've never uh, used uh, smartphones earlier, people who are less educated, who are in the front line, who've hardly used a smartphone ever in their life. Now, how do we ensure that we give them that application that they can use seamlessly? We really had to think through this before we could take this across. I'll give you 
a small example. I mean, people don't know whether it's a PIN number or it's an OTP and how to use it across. We, we're dealing with people who don't understand and really the innovation has to come in that area. How do we ensure that uh, by leveraging the digital identities that are already available in your smartphone, people don't have to uh, think about OTPs and pins, right? Uh, this is the direction in which uh, it has forced us to think and think through very hard. Um, while we've already gone ahead with uh, revamping our cells uh, and distribution infrastructure, but in a, with a different mindset altogether. And again, another thing that we should not forget about is with digitization and digital innovation comes the privacy and security issue. Uh, now, that is something that again, uh, we've been forced to think by design. Privacy has to be there by design. Security has to be there by design. And there's a lot of work that we are doing across our infrastructure to ensure that these things are seamless. Uh, now, you know, when we talk about post COVID, it's very important that we talk about economic revival. And we believe as a telecom and digital telecom, we have a bigger role to play and we can kick a start uh, the uh, economy of a country, at least we can contribute our part to it. And we are really the ones who connect the consumers, the people who create the demand with the merchant who supply things. And we, we believe that we can create the tremendous social value across uh, and the economic activities can be kickstarted. The things have started to move in and to put uh, perspective into what I'm talking about, we are creating somewhere around, uh, helping the nation with somewhere around 57,000 jobs directly and indirectly. While we have around 600 direct employees, but we are helping with the indirect operation operation around 18,000 plus jobs. Similarly, through our capital investment, there are around another 37,000 jobs being created in this market. Similarly, let's say as a telecom in Nepal, we are somewhere contributing around 60 billion Nepalese rupees, which is equivalent to 1.64% of the national GDP with a capital investment of somewhere around 21 billion and operational directly around somewhere 29 billion and indirect around 10 billion. Uh, there's a lot of value that we are creating into the economy of the country. And our tax contribution has been somewhere around 32 billion, which is about 3.8% of the total tax revenue of the country. So even if we look purely from a financial numbers perspective, there's a lot that a telco can do to kick a start the economy of a country. With everything that we are do doing in sales and distribution domain, in customer domain, in security and privacy domain, I believe as a telco, we have a big part to play in order to kick a start the economy of the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vishal. Um, I think that's a great uh, introduction into to the many impacts uh, and, and as you say, the revival of the economy that, that the telco sector can, can um, catalyze. Um, we're gonna move on next to um, Dr. Alex Lee, who will bring us the perspective uh, from Ding Talk, and, and I think um, especially in the in the cloud and cloud services area. So, Alex, over to you. Uh, thanks, team. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, great. 
So uh, I'm Alex in charge of Alibaba uh, Think Talk uh, International Business. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the overview of Think Talk business and our understanding of digital transformation supported by Think Talk and Alibaba Cloud. Uh, here is the Think Talk journey since it was founded in 2015. We developed 100 million users and 5 million organizations in the first two years. And in the second two years, we doubled the number of users and organizations. Last year, during the pandemic period, Think Talk experienced rapid growth. By the end of December 2020, more than 4 million users and 17 million organizations were activated on the Intel platform. In June this year, 2024, we launched the latest version of Dintop 6.0, which will announce the new product proposition as the platform of collaborative office and application development. I will talk about it more later. As of now, Dintop serves many clients in different industries, including telecom, real estate, retail, manufacturing, edu education, BFSI, etc. Et Due to the pandemic, we have seen the increasing popularity of online office and online education. At the very beginning of the pandemic, Team Talk released the remote work guidelines for employees and offered one-stop solutions for small and medium-sized enterprise at a free cost. Nearly 200 million people from thousands of companies are using Dintop to get connected with their colleagues, partners, and customers. Video meeting supports more than 300 participants in one meeting. On the other hand, we have seen dramatic growth of education customers too. Dintop supported online classes for 140 million students in 210,000 schools in China only. More than 7 million teachers use the Talk to teach during the pandemic period. And in 2020, Dintop also became, you know, one of the education platforms recommended by the United Nations. Talk is a digital collaboration platform for modern enterprise and organizations. Dintop also has evolved from a simple communication platform to a comprehensive platform for collaborative office and application development. Dintop has developed many collaborative, collaborative office tools, including calendar, documents, meetings, to do, attendance, approval, etc. At the same time, Dintalk is getting more and more open and friendly to developers and customers themselves. The third party ISVs can develop their software on Dintalk platform. We also support customers to develop their own applications as themselves. One of the key advantages for Dintalk is Alibaba Cloud because Alibaba Cloud has deployed global infrastructure in many regions, which makes Dintalk elastic, reliable, and scalable. How do Dintalk and Alibaba Cloud support the digital transformation for the customer? I think, firstly, customer experience is key to the success of digital transformation. Mobilization is a clear trend for most of the customers, and Dintalk supports multi-terminal synchronization to assure the customer to have the seamless experience with different terminals and operating systems. Low latency is also very important too. Let me take one example. More than 99.5% of Dintalk instant messages can be successfully delivered in one second anyway. Dintalk is also very flexible to customization based on different customer requirements. Customer can have their own design, security solutions, packages, services, and so on. Secondly, 
Cloud native is also a kind of key capability for Ding Dong. For instance, Alibaba Cloud App Server OS and instant messages are originally developed on cloud and support all Alibaba group business, including Taobao, Timor, the e-commerce platform, Alipay, and Sanyo Logistics, etc. In other words, these are proven technologies which can be commonly used for all organizations. EDA is a, a local development platform launched recently. We are very confident we can support more than 10 million applications in three years. Certainly, Intel and Alibaba Cloud have the coverage for infrastructures, sales, and services globally. Global customers can approach us easily to get the service. The, at the last but not the least, Dingtalk also can be deployed you know, in different methods. We can deploy Dingtalk on private cloud, public cloud, or hybrid cloud. We support the multi-cloud deployment as well for those customers who already invested in cloud infrastructure you can leverage your existing investment to support the new services, grow together with all types of users and partners. We at DingTalk are dedicated to become a technology partner. We look at our customers and partners as the co-developers to capture the new opportunities and grow the business together. With the multi-capabilities supported by DingTalk and Alibaba Cloud, we will be more open, flexible, and capable to support all types of customers and partners. Team talk, make work and study easy. A new digital collaboration platform for modern enterprise and organizations. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, very interesting insights and, and I look forward to um, being able to get into some of the uh, the implications of that when we when we get to the to the Q and A. Um, but first, I'm um, very pleased to hand over now to Stephen Cho um, of <coughs> Whale Cloud, who is our final speaker um, uh, of the session. Um, Stephen is the Chief Digital Officer, and Stephen, over to you. Uh, I'm Stephen Cho. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm leading the uh, Well Cloud International uh, go-to marketing strategy and also the business developments. Today, it's my glad, uh, it's my pleasure to share my understanding and our company strategy is called a zero touch, uh, zero distance for the uh, pandemic era. So zero touch means, you know, we, we cannot see each other, but we, uh, uh, zero distance means we, our heart are linking together to face this situation. So first, please allow me to use two slides to introduce uh, who we are and what we are doing. So firstly, uh, WellCloud is an independent company focusing on uh, business and operating supporting system for telco sectors. So WellCloud has two parent company. One is ZD Corporation, another is uh, Alibaba Group. Uh, that make us very unique in uh, telco uh, domain. We, we have the telco understanding and also the Alibaba uh, uh, internet-based kind of uh, technology and also the ecosystem. So let's take a look at that. In the 1991, we are the business units of ZTE. We focus on the Chinese market. And in 2003, we are go international. At that time, we have a very good product for, for example, the online charging system and our business solutions. And for coming uh, next 15 years, we expand our products to uh, more and more uh, BSS and OSS and big data solutions. And in 2018, we got the strategic investment from the Alibaba Group, uh, especially uh, Alibaba Cloud. So at, a, at that time, we got the capability to enable the telcos has the services not only in the communication services, but also the cloud services. Uh, then coming to the uh, last year, that is 2020, we started uh, because the COVID-19 has accelerated digital transformation. So we started collaboration with the DINTALK. So I think the DINTALK can allow us and allow our telco uh, customers has the, uh, has the 
capability to embrace the super app strategy and also embrace the mobile first and also enable more and more ecosystem partners to onboard in the platform. So uh, our overall solution is called the deep app, which can help the telcos to uh, uh, face actively face this kind of a situation. So uh, the deep app is a digital business in Apple platform. It's the next generation operating platform building on Alibaba success in the platform economy. I think the telco sectors talk about uh, the platform uh, economy for several years, but a lot everyone can succeed. Uh, recently, I saw some some operators is doing that well. Uh, as as we say that the uh, uh, for example, Ansel in the Ashata Group, and also uh, for example in Rakuta in Japan, uh, Ajio in India. They are very do, uh, they're doing good in the platform economy. So in the platform economy, I think uh, uh, we, we not only have the traditional, for example, uh, BSS and OSS supporting systems, just as the bottom of this uh, page. We have very good uh, layer uh, in the upper layer, you can see we focus on the uh, engagement domain, which is the digital channels. So based on that, we can uh, onboarding more and more digital services. For example, in the consumer markets, we, we can link uh, to the Alibaba e-commerce uh, backbone and also the Alipay uh, ecosystems. To the enterprise market, we can uh, uh, use, utilize in you know, Alibaba's technology, uh, Apsara stack, and also the Dintalk uh, technology and also the Dintalk ecosystem to help uh, uh, the operators to embrace uh, this kind of uh, platform economy and to actually actively uh, face the challenge for the uh, COVID-19. So our uh, post-pandemic uh, post strategy upgrading is, uh, we focus on three uh, directions. The first of all is uh, web cloud itself. Uh, we established uh, a website, it's called the BOL. It's called, a, uh, it's a business online. So it focusing uh, uh, well, cloud itself, it can shorten the distance between operator and well cloud. It has the functionality, for example, the marketing online, IND online, delivery online, and the ecosystem online that can greatly improve the transparency of well cloud itself. And second is to em uh, empower, for example, uh, our customers, for example, focus on their channels, super app, uh, for example, the consumer markets, enterprise markets. And the second, uh, the third strategy is we call it the digital transformation 2.0 is not only supporting your, uh, the existing connectivity services, but also the digital services actively engage uh, to uh, seek growth together with the ecosystem partners. So let's see the first one. The first one, uh, the business online is our internal digital transformation because we think uh, uh, if we cannot do the digital transformation ourselves, then we cannot help our customers to do, this, to do the digital transformation. So BOL is a marketing place to enable our customers to see our latest products and features. For example, in the BSS, OSS, 5G, cloud, e-commerce, finance, smart city, and consulting services. And you also can see our latest features, benefits, uh, business scenarios uh, through our uh, data sheets, interactive demos, extended demos. You also can see our latest thinking uh, perspectives, wide levels through different BOL channels. And more importantly, a customer can have the online trial capability for several products currently. For example, workforce management, uh, CRM, charging and billing. And we are uh, planning to have this online trial capability for all our products uh, to, have our, uh, to allow our customer to experience that. And the second strategy is to uh, focus on the digital channels. We also cooperate with the Dintalk. Uh, for example, this is one major operator in Asia. We collaborated with, the, uh, with them to invest in the digital channels for the uh, COVID-19. So uh, their monthly active users has been growing from 2 million to 4 million. 
uh, because of the both parties' uh, efforts. So currently, this uh, app is not only a self-care app, but also a lifestyle platform. So the young people uh, in this market, they can uh, order the food, they can buy the insurance, play mobile games, uh, watch the movies, play, uh, you know, they can have the online education, for example, and the capabilities. And then later on, we can also link this kind of uh, supermarkets to Alibaba e-commerce, to the Alipay ecosystem, to the, uh, you know, to monetize, not only retain the existing customers, but also monetize the existing customers to improve the lifetime value. The second one is for the enterprise uh, markets. As you say, as Alex just introduced, the Dintalk is a super app uh, in the uh, enterprise market can enable the enterprise, global enterprise, I think, to improve the digitalization level. It's the all-in-one digital workstation. Uh, you can see they have native application, for example, uh, unified communication, office automation, internal and external uh, collaboration. This kind of capability can enable, can empower the enterprise to improve the efficiency to face uh, this kind of situation. And for big companies, we think they have the existing systems, for example, finance, ERP. Uh, so uh, uh, our system can easily to integrate that to, uh, in, to help them to improve the efficiency. And for SMEs, for small company, for example, they don't have the capability to build their own uh, finance systems, ERP systems, for example. They can buy the SaaS services for, from this enterprise app store. So this is the dream, I think, for, uh, for the telco sectors, for the operators to have the uh, enterprise app store to monetize your uh, enterprise uh, customers. So uh, next one is the cloud BSS. Uh, as uh, Michelle just uh, introduced, because I think a lot of the operators have the interests to run in, to run in their cloud services, not only the communication services. So, but uh, you know, the, uh, you have the operating skill, but uh, I think the technology itself and also the operating tool, uh, there is a gap. We can help uh, you to fulfill this kind of a gap. So uh, here, just one example, in uh, 2020, we helped uh, one of the uh, leading operator in Indonesia to set up uh, cloud uh, BSS to run in the cloud services. So the end users can have the uh, web or APP to uh, log in to buy their cloud services, just like the Alibaba cloud. So uh, the system, uh, definitely is has a deep integration with the Alibaba public and a private cloud. So if you uh, if our customer has their own uh, existing hardware, and also if they have the existing uh, collaboration with the leading technology, for example AWS, so our uh, we have a multiple cloud management platform to support uh, that as well. So here comes to my conclusion. So in the uh, epidemic or post-pandemic era, the customer behavior has been changed. So whether, uh, whether to shrink your business and all adapt to the new era has become a very important strategy for every enterprises. And Alibaba and also WellCloud is uh, are implementing the strategy is called zero touch, zero distance uh, to help our customers to actively face this kind of situation. Uh, our business online can help companies to better uh, understanding our solutions, uh, which uh, bring the open platform consulting services and you know this kind of capabilities to shorten the distance between uh, us and also our clients. And well cloud also providing zero touch, zero distance digital channels as well as digital services to the, not only the consumer market, but also the enterprise market, especially in the enterprise market, we have the killer application from cloud and also the Dintalk. So Dintalk is not only a, a super app, but also can drive the operators, cloud services and network services. That is very uh, important in this kind of uh, situation. So that's my uh, sharing, the team. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, 
that's very interesting and especially the detail around how you can introduce a service level platform for, for telcos of, um, of across a whole range of services. Okay, we're going to move into um, some Q&A um, to go back into uh, each of the speakers presentations. Um, and um, Vishal, I'm, I'm going to start with you um, as you were the first um, speaker. So you talked a lot about how NCEL has supported the country through the pandemic um, in a whole facet of ways. I wonder if you can talk to looking ahead, um, how do you at NCEL think about supporting Nepalese society in the year to come in the recovery period through this pandemic? You see, um, I, I did touch a little bit across some of the infrastructure that we have we have worked on and we are trying to leverage. We understand that uh, it's no longer a silo game. It's an ecosystem play that we have to embrace. And maybe in Nepal, it's a little bit late coming, but obviously the COVID has accelerated the thought process, even if the implementation may be a bit far away, but the at least it has provoked the thought process of everybody in the country. So uh, how do we go about into the ecosystem play and how uh, do we assist each other rather than competing with each other? That's the mindset with which we will uh, move forward. Uh, while in, in the past and traditionally we've been selling voice SMS and data just uh, in 2019, we started focusing across um, our enterprise business as well. And we launched uh, uh, n 4 we, we call ourselves n self for business and targeting the enterprise business. So that um, not just the consumer ecosystem, but it's very important to do a collaboration across the enterprise domain and help leverage our infrastructure, especially our network infrastructure, our data center infrastructure, as well as leverage the power of Asiata Group in general. Say, for example, we are in partnership with Google, uh, AWS, Alibaba, WellCloud. How, how do we uh, leverage that into the Nepalese society to uh, fast forward the economic recovery across? I mean, that is one way that we are looking into it because the demand has been generated uh, because of this pandemic. Everybody has learned how to live with the new norm. Now there's a demand in the market and we, sh we should be able to fulfill that from a supply side by bringing the ecosystem into the play. Similarly, we're also looking just not uh, from the enterprise perspective, but revamping our entire sales and distribution portfolio as to how do we ensure that we don't get caught up in something else if another thing hits us, right? We have to be ready for us into our sales ecosystem, into our uh, customer touch points and ecosystem. So there's a whole heap of activities that is coming across and going towards our consumer with the help of our partners. Um, you know, simple things as such, I mean, um, uh, the country may be behind. I mean, how do we leverage the power of OTTs to help serve our people? Why does it, why do people have to use the channel that we have? Why don't we be omnipresent in any channel that the consumer is using today? So we are moving into that direction and uh, we are already a long way into it. And so we will be available wherever the consumer demands are and ensure that the infrastructure in which we've invested so much can be leveraged by everybody who wants to come into this country or are already into this country and help build the economy and the society of the country. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So many interesting things to, to watch both in Nepal and around the world. Um, so thank you very much. Um, Alex, maybe if I could move on to you next. Um, 
clearly in the pandemic, one of the major consequences of social distancing and societal restrictions has been working from home and um, remote education with, with kids not being able to go to school uh, as normal. You spoke very um, eloquently about how uh, your organization is, is servicing um, this market. I wonder if you can talk about the future development of remote working and remote education and specifically how you make that as interactive as possible for people so that it is as genuine an experience as you would have in person. Okay, thank you. I think uh, uh, this is a very good question. Um, if you look at the uh, customers, uh, no matter they are from uh, you know, the enterprise or education, uh, I think uh, uh, it's getting uh, a new normal uh, for them to be online. Uh, I think this is a very, very clear trend. Uh, for us, you know, we uh, will work in this way. So number one, uh, we will continue to strengthen our capabilities uh, of the, uh, you know, fundamental uh, basis, uh, including, uh, you know, the uh, cloud native technologies, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, infrastructures, you know, infrastructure. I think this is number one. Uh, we will make sure uh, we will provide uh, the uh, uh, cloud native technologies, you know, uh, you know, uh, this is number one. Number two is uh, we will also work with many SV partners because they know the business, you know, uh, much better. They know uh, many different industries. So we will get their solutions integrated with our platform. It's also very, very important uh, because going forward, uh, you know, I, I'm very much sure SV players, you know, will uh, will be uh, very critical for the success of the digital transformation uh, for uh, education and, uh, uh, and enterprise. Uh, we have worked with many ISVs uh, to develop you know, some uh, uh, vertical solutions uh, for each industry. The third one is uh, you know, the, customer, uh, the customers themselves. Customers you know, uh, you know, know their business much better than anybody else, right? Now, the application platform, application development platform is getting much easier for them to develop their own applications. This is also a very, very important trend. We have the uh, low code uh, development platform and uh, this will be a new direction uh, for the customer to leverage our platform. Thank you very much. Um, Lots of interesting things to follow there um, and, and so much innovation going on. Um, okay, and then Stephen, um, coming to you, coming to you um, finally, uh, you know, you talked in detail about how you work with your clients um, to undergo digital transformation initiatives in, in a range of contexts. Yep. I wonder, you know, for Whale Cloud, what would successful digital transformation look like um, for you and, and for your customers? And, and how do you express that? Okay. So I think uh, uh, if, if there is a successful digital transformation, we have to do very successfully by ourselves. So if uh, well cloud cannot do digital transformation ourselves, we cannot help our clients to do the digital transformation. So I think the uh, best uh, digital transformation is the business transformation. It's not an IT transformation. The IT transformation is about a simplification. It's about uh, swapping you know, from one vendor to another vendor, but the business is the same. So a successful digital tra transformation means business transformation, uh, especially for the post and during the pandemic situation. I think uh, uh, the digital transformation should focus on, on the channels because customer cannot meet each other. Uh, you know, uh, the remotely engage your customer, remotely uh, engage, you know, uh, become more and more popular. So digital is not, uh, you know, a remote. Digital doesn't only means remote. Digital should uh, focus on some kind of a strategy. So focusing on digital channels and also the digital services to enable 
uh, our clients to embrace the ecosystem, to monetize the existing customers, to embrace you know, the ecosystem that will be a successful digital transformation from my side. Thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> I think that is a good note to end on. Um, and I want to just wrap things up by um, first off thanking uh, our speakers, Vishal Upadhyay from Ensel, Alex Lee from Ding Talk, and Stephen Cho from, from Whale Cloud. Um, we've touched on a number of interesting facets of digital transformation, uh, be that from a telecom perspective. Uh, or adjacent sectors, uh, enterprise, uh, or others in the TMT. I think there's a common thread of being able to articulate the goal you're trying to achieve without having any prior preferences for any specific technology. This is about a consultative mindset and working together to solve problems. Um, and this has been a really good discussion, discussion for that. So thank you all very much uh, for joining us today and sharing your, your insights and plans. Uh, and it just leaves me to say thank you, everybody, for watching uh, and stay safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, team.